We're doing a Magic Kingdom Resort monorail crawl. But we don't get to choose if we eat or drink. Hey, ma'am fam, today we are doing a monorail crawl, making stops to eat and drink at Disney's Contemporary, Polynesian Village, and Grand Floridian Resorts. But this time, cast members are going to choose what we eat and drink on our trip around Seven Seas Lagoon. Let's go. Our first stop today is Disney's Contemporary Resort. This is an opening day resort, October 1st, 1971. Contemporary, like all the resorts today, is a deluxe resort, and it is right next to the Magic Kingdom, so it's a fan favorite for that reason. There's plenty of places to eat and drink in the Contemporary. If it was later in the day, we could try our luck getting into California Grill, the rooftop restaurant. Uh, you've got Contempo Cafe and Chef Mickey's in the outer rim on the main level. Of course, the pool bars. But today, we are headed into one of my favorite restaurants on property and their lounge, Steakhouse 71. Oh yeah, so excited. The Contemporary got a lovely remodel for the Walt Disney World 50, and part of that was changing the wave, dot, dot, dot of American flavors into Steakhouse 71, which has quickly become one of my favorite restaurants in Walt Disney World. It's walking distance from the Magic Kingdom. They've got incredible burgers, steaks, cocktail sides, and it's themed to 1971 when Walt Disney World opened. So there's lots of nods to Walt himself. When you walk into the restaurant, there are twists on original menu items here. And it just, it, as a Disney nerd, it's a lovely respite from the Magic Kingdom. And uh, oh look, Harriet Burns. Oh. One of my favorites. I think my favorite part about Steakhouse 71, aside from the food and drink, which is obviously incredible, is this little walk down memory lane as you enter the restaurant itself with all these pictures of opening day sights and scenes for the Magic Kingdom and Walt Disney World. There's also concept art throughout the restaurant and it is a retro upgrade that this restaurant desperately needed. Steakhouse 71 is open with reservations for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. However, if you do want lighter bites or just a beverage, they have a lounge available as well that is first come, first serve. And luckily for us today, pretty empty. Now the menu here at Steakhouse 71 in the lounge is going to be just a tad bit different than what you'd find in the main restaurant itself, but it is no less fantastic. Cocktails are twists on classic cocktails, so you're going to have things like the Manhattan, but it's a Fig Manhattan, or the Boulevardier, but the Coco Boulevardier. And I just have to say, when it comes to the cocktails that I've had here, I've not had a bad one yet, even for liquors that I don't typically drink or enjoy. I've really had an excellent experience here. Now the stack burger for the menu and the lounge bites is what people come for. Everything else looks incredible. You have things like the loaded mac and cheese or the shrimp cocktail, but honestly, it's not up to us today. We're going to be asking the cast members to choose for us. So here's how this is gonna to work today. At each location, we're gonna ask the cast members what we should order. We're gonna ask them for the most popular food and drink items, and we're gonna order those, and then we're gonna ask them for cast members' choice. It can be their favorite item, it can be something underrated on the menu, it can be whatever they want, and uh, that's what we're eating and drinking today. I'm excited. We always say to ask the cast members about the menu because obviously they know best and I'm excited to put that to the test today. Okay, this is Sarah. She's picking our food and drinks here at Steakhouse 71. Okay, so for drinks, our most popular one is probably the Fig Manhattan. Yes. It kind of goes between that one and the Curious Cold Brew, but only because the Curious we get from day to night, so it's sure. different. Sure. Um, so we'll do that one and then my favorite is the French 71. Ooh, so excellent. It's not typically brought to the attention, but it's sweet, so it's really nice. Okay. And then food-wise, our popular is going to be the burger, because we've already talked about this. It's everybody's favorite that they come here for. And then something that's a little more underrated is going to be the PBJ wings. Ooh. So I really like them, and most like nine out of ten people also really like them, but they are quite underrated. All right, so, let's do it. Great. The cocktails have arrived now. For most popular, Sarah chose the Fig Manhattan, which is monkey shoulder blended scotch and Crunchyroll Noir. Walt Disney's favorite cocktail was the Scotch Mist, so this is kind of a nod to that. And then her choice for her favorite, most underrated cocktail is the French 71. It's Curvassier uh, VS Cognac, Pear Nectar, Agave Syrup, Lemon Juice, and Prosecco. This is definitely something sweeter than either of us would normally order, but excited to try it. Cheers. Oh. Now, she's right, this is a little bit sweeter than I would normally drink, but it's also the middle of the day. <laughs> So, yeah. you know, the drink I normally get, which is the Coco <laughs> Boulevardier, is uh, quite strong. Good old middle of the day so cocktail. So it's a nice daytime, a day drink, if you will. While the sun is high in the sky. 
this is a good, you're escaping from the Magic Kingdom and you need an hour in the air conditioning away from all the crowds and strollers drink. Mm. This is delightful. Also, even though it again is sweeter than I normally would pick, it's not sickly artificial sweet. You can tell that it's fresh made in-house products. It's fresh lemon juice and the Prosecco is adding a little bit of bubble to break it up. Can't really taste the cognac, which is probably dangerous. Yeah, but it's light, slightly fruity, refreshing. Not bad. Cheers. I feel so fancy when I have one of these. So fancy. Martini glasses always make me feel fancy. Oh. First of all, I love it, so let's start there. It is going to be a little bit thicker than what you'd get from a standard Manhattan because of the fig, and there is a bit of a texture change there. It's not gritty, but you can certainly you certainly can taste that there is actual fig or fig preserves in there. Were you about to talk about mouthfeel? <laughs> Like yeah. Carl's Boyle on yeah. his pizza. I was going to talk about pizza ranking. I didn't. I don't know how how you all really enjoy talking about <laughs> mouthfeel. Mouth feel. Um, but you can taste the scotch. I'm a scotch fan. It is smokier than I think a lot of people might enjoy. But in this setting, with the offset sweetness of the fig, this is a really approachable Manhattan and a really approachable way to try scotch for the first time. For those of you who are texture sensitive, maybe steer clear. But I love this. Would you order your cocktail again? A thousand percent. Would you order that cocktail again? I think it's hard for me to come to a place like this and not order something like a Manhattan or an Old Fashioned, but I do like it, and I think a lot of you would like that because I think I have a different drink palette than a lot of people. Yeah, it's good? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It really truly is the best burger on property. It's probably the best burger I've ever had. It's that thin smash burger style patty. There's two of them, lots and lots of good cheese. I love the crispness from the red onion, that kind of acidity. I love the crispness from the pickles, that house made lemon aioli. Definitely the pro tip to get the spicy ranch for the burger and your fries. You cannot go wrong with this. I'm not surprised it's the most popular thing. You should eat this, it's, it's so good. All right, well now I'm gonna get a bite. Oh. <laughs> okay, I feel like I should get one that has some peanut crumble on it. Let's go to the middle one here. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, it's so hot, heavily coated. Oh, wow, here we go. Cheers. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is so good. I'm having a really hard time forming words. Let's talk about the wing first. Juicy, not dry, very well cooked all the way through. Piping hot. And the glaze itself is so good. There's just enough of the jelly sweetness to make it sort of jammy in flavor and texture, but the peanut butter shines through and it works so well as a counterbalance to the meat itself. It's this really rich, nutty flavor that ends with a little bit of sweetness, kind of like a barbecue sauce would. It's on my face, isn't it? Nope. Cool. Stop one complete. Okay, what was the highlight for you on this one? Mm. It's hard to beat that burger. It really, truly is. It's the most popular thing on their menu for a reason. It's, it's so good. One of my favorite Disney World foods. Got to get that spicy ranch pro tip there. The fries are crispy and great. I mean, you can't beat that burger. But I also really liked the Fig Manhattan. I'd had it before. It continues to be a banger. I like that it's a twist on a classic cocktail. Yeah. You know what surprised me, though, was the peanut butter and jelly wings. Yeah. I genuinely thought that that was either going to be amazing or terrible. Mm. It was on the amazing side. I would caution, I guess, to say probably it's one of the top five wings I've had on property, period. I would say that's true. And what's interesting is I remember trying the wings when this restaurant first opened and they oh. were a little dry oh. and I didn't care for them, but they have kicked up the sauce and it, the peanut butter sauce is really, really good. I would absolutely go eat those again. I would say that was like a perfect meal. Yeah, I fully agree. Fun fact about the PB&J wings, we heard Sarah talking about uh, the what was actually going into those. It's strawberry jam. Strawberry's my favorite. No wonder I like yeah, them so, so much. Yeah, it's so good. <laughs> oh. So big thank you to Sarah at Steakhouse 71. If you see her, make sure you say hello and that you watched her reviews. And as a courtesy note, we did ask her if it'd be okay if we picked her brain on her opinions, if she had time at the bar to do that, and if she'd be okay being on camera. We want to make sure we're courteous to all the cast members because they're the best. On to the poly. On to the poly. We away. We have asked. And we can't get on the monorail without stopping by a merchandise shop. I mean, I just love walking through a Disney merchandise shop. That's fair. Uh, anything in particular you're looking for? Yeah, a kickball. Thank a goodness small I found one. Kickball. It's a playground ball. You could get a good whip on this, though, if you're playing some dodgeball. 
I'm sorry, are you looking to injure someone? No, I don't think you would injure Oh, okay, <laughs> sure. As you can imagine, I was very good at dodgeball. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, Nick Nack. They have a whole collection of the Pixar oh, wow. shorts. Luna, Lava You, oh and then... Oh my gosh. And then Churros, the, the well-known Pixar short. It would make more sense in Disneyland because Disneyland churros are actually good. I wish it wasn't yellow. I look like a banana. <coughs> yeah. Look at that. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the original oh, wow. Fab Four. <laughs> now that's cute. That's Disney. Stepping up the merch game. Some of these are the original Fab Four with a bow tie printed on it, and then some of them are really cute. Look at this purse. The handle is the monorail. Oh, wow. It is very glittery. That is excellent. I mean, it extends everywhere here, the highway and the sky. They have a monorail on the ears. These are the new ears. Oh, they're color changers. What causes them to change color? The sun. Oh, well, that's cool. These are cool. They've got the Incredibles need? on them. No. Backslash got, want? No, they've got the Incredibles on them for the um, new Incredible rooms. We haven't done our staycation series here, but... It's on the list. They're all on the list. But these are cute. Mm-hmm. So if I buy this, do you think we could go bowling? Like an alley cat strike? You know, I think we could go bowling without it, but I hear what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and with that bit of perusal, we're going to make our way up to the monorails and say hello to the five-legged goat. There she is. She's beauty and she's grace. She's got five legs near her face. I do love the Mary Blair mural here inside the Contemporary. It's admittedly not my favorite resort, but I love the Mary Blair artwork. And there's the goat. Now, just waiting for our monorail to arrive. This one is the express monorail, which just connects the Transportation and Ticket Center, which is Magic Kingdom parking, to the Magic Kingdom. The resort monorail has stops here at the Contemporary, obviously, Transportation and Ticket Center, Polynesian, Grand Floridian, and then Magic Kingdom. arrived here at the Poly, and it looks like we got weather coming our way. Yeah, we were originally going to go down to the pool bar area because they have a lot of frozen beverages that are a lot of fun, Dole Whip infused frozen beverages and things, and we figured we could do dessert in the middle because we do what we want. Absolutely, and who doesn't love a dessert sandwich where you have a savory meal with dessert in the middle followed by a savory meal? That's how I do it. I agree. Well, with the pool bar out of the question because of the liquid sunshine that is indeed imminent, Let's go to Pineapple Lanai, which is the Dole Whip counter, and see what flavors they have and what the cast members recommend there. Don't they have like a, a spirited version of the Dole Whip? Only if the cast members tell us to drink it. That's fair, that's fair. They could recommend coconut if they have it. They don't have coconut here. Oh no. It's a sad day indeed. But they could have another flavor. Oh. They could have a specialty cone. No longer sad. We don't know. Only time will tell. Only time will tell. And by time, I mean the next 10 seconds. Yeah, we're here. All right, we are here with Julian and Patrick Michael, who are going to pick us two different Dole Whip treats. Um, well, my favorite is the pineapple flow, which is pineapple juice with pineapple Dole Whip on top. I just think it complements it really well. So I would recommend that. And I mean, if you're feeling a little spicy, our most popular flavor is the swirl, and you can order it with rum and a flow cup, which is also pineapple juice. You'd be pouring a shot of rum into the pineapple juice and eating it with the ice cream. Ooh, okay, so one classic pineapple float and yep. one boozy swirl. All right. All right. We also swirl. have um, a little side of tequila if you want some. Oh yeah, let's Ooh, do that. Yeah, yeah sure. spice it up. Really? All right. And here we have our two delicious Dole Whip treats. The first is a classic Dole Whip pineapple float. So that's just the Dole Whip pineapple soft serve with the Dole pineapple juice. And then we got a vanilla pineapple swirl with the pineapple juice, but it also has coconut rum on it. So floater. And we were given a little container of tahini if we really want to zhuzh it up. Ooh, yeah, salt bay. Oh, okay. we're melting. Trying to get the rum floater going. Sorry. I got over eager. That tahini is great. The tahini 
Adds a little saltiness, a little spiciness. I like it. Mm. You are dripping everywhere. It is the downside of a Dole Whip. Oh, the vanilla is great as a swirl. So of course the Dole Whip is a classic Disney treat. I would say it's the most famous Disney snack. Mickey Premium Bar? I think Dole Whip takes it. Wow. Let us know, what do you think? It's the pineapple soft serve and it started when it was just pineapple. And it started where you could only get it at Dole, at Disneyland, at Walt Disney World. And then you could get more flavors, and now you can get it at Costco. It's just really... It's exploded. Outside of these two, we have pineapple, we have a vanilla swirl situation. What is your favorite Dole Whip flavor? Coconut. I also really like the lemon I also and the, the lime. The raspberry that they had mm. was very good. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to get a floater as well. It gets you a rum floater. Yeah, it's just sort of sitting at the top there. Yep. <laughs> there it is. Which do you prefer, the swirl or the classic? Uh, I like the classic flavor more. I like the swirl because pineapple is actually not my favorite fruit or my favorite flavor. And I think the uh, swirl with the vanilla adds a little bit of creaminess to it and breaks up the acidity of the pineapple. I just like pineapple stuff, so this is, this is it for me. With that coconut <laughs> rum floater, would also be very tasty. always time for another gift shop walkthrough. Especially at the Boutique, which is arguably the best store name ever. Also arguably the best store in a resort. I love the Boutique, but I also might be a little bit biased because I just like the Polynesian vibes. Yeah, that's true. We did shop here on our Polynesian Village staycation. If you haven't watched that yet, check it out. We had a bucket list moment and got to stay in one of the bungalows. But honestly, I'm just on the quest for a certain pair of ears, and I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it hasn't been going as, as you've wanted? No. I know they're at one particular store at Magic Kingdom, and uh, I haven't seen them anywhere else. So we're going to call this walkthrough complete? The... Look at that cute tiki oh. shirt. We only accept large bills. <laughs> I get because <it>, <laughs> bills like birds. Yes. Nice. Bills like birds. It's like, um, let me explain it to you. I don't think yeah, you so walk me through it. Yeah, okay, go ahead. So it's like, we only accept large bills, which uh -huh. is a joke, because a lot of places only accept smaller bills. Like, they won't accept bills over $100. That's for counterfeit purposes, uh -huh. and they often won't have the right change for it. Mm -hmm. But here it's a joke, because it's we only accept large bills. Yes. Which is especially funny, because it's a tiki room shirt, and mm -hmm. birds have bills. That's what their mouths are called. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. Without that, I would never have known what that joke was. Well, I'm, ha I'm here to help. Thank you. I'm very appreciative of your explanation. Once I went on a date with a guy that explained why all the jokes in a movie were funny, and I had to be like, yeah, I, I know that's why I'm laughing. I I'm laughing because I got the joke. For context, listener, not me. <laughs> Jumping back on the monorail, looks like it's monorail Teal, one of my personal favorite monorails. Uh huh, I see it too. And headed to our last stop. <laughs> Made it to our third and final stop, the Grand Floridian. You know, Alan, I forgot to ask, how'd you like those Dole Whip floats? You know, I'm more of a Dole Whip in a cup kind of guy, but I'll tell you, the tahini is a game changer. I got to agree with that. I got to agree with that. I will be asking for that next time. Actually, I think they make little tahini packets to go. You could like bring your own with you. BYOT? Yeah, I'm gonna look into that. Coconut and tahini, should we try that? Seems like a good idea. It could be either terrible or amazing. No, I think it'd be great. Like a fresh fruit plus the salty spiciness, I'm in. We might have to do some food experiments. Food science. Entering the beautiful lobby here at Disney's Grand Floridian Resort mm -hmm. Spa. This is Disney's fanciest resort, though you might not be able to tell that right this moment. No, I don't see it. Uh-huh. Uh, they're undergoing a huge refurbishment in the lobby, so you'll see some bushes, you'll see some construction, like down here. Uh, but we still got the piano player vibing, and they've said the construction and the refurbishment will be done before the holidays for the gingerbread house. So excited about that. Now we have about 25 minutes until Enchanted Rose starts serving food, so what should we do? Merch shop. Yes. Maybe this is where I'll find my ears. You know what, let's keep that dream alive, you know? It's alive right now. It's soon to be dead. <laughs> wow. 
I don't That's see them. Really sad. I don't see them. Oh my gosh. I just took like a really dark turn. I thought turn. the Grand might have them because they're one of the ones I really want are princess themed, and I thought the Grand would be here for me, but it's not. Alas, tisn't. No. Nope. Wait a minute now. Hold on. They have bunny themed though. Those are left over from Easter. What? It's, a, all, the, it's wow. all the bunnies. What it's, is... it's Judy Hopps uh -huh. and the White Rabbit and Thumper. And some other Alice characters and for flowers some from Alice? Yeah, the talking flowers. There's the, the March Mad Hare. Hatter. Oh, he's the March Hare. Oh, the Mar yes. And there's Rabbit. Mm-hmm. Oh, there's the boots from Sleeping Beauty. A, a well-known rabbit-themed character. I actually think these are really cute. I just don't think I could pull off the bunny ear portion of this. I think you should try. I think you should try. This didn't go how I planned. At all. But we're here now. These are uncomfortable. I don't know how you wear them for as long as you do. Behind my ear is just a, a, a callus. Oh, so not pressing it on your temples? No, oh, you're wearing them wrong. There we go. Interestingly enough, did not make it better. Yeah, I think just behind my ear is just um, a callus. It's just leather behind there. <laughs> oh my God. Between ears, sunglasses, and for a long time, a mask. What a descriptor. It's just... Old leathery skin. Headed to Enchanted Rose now. This is the second story lounge at the Granite. It used to be Meisner's. Remember it was Meisner's? I do remember Meisner's. They had a fantastic martini. They did have a fantastic martini, didn't they? But I prefer Enchanted Rose. It's a subtly Beauty and the Beast themed lounge. There are nods to the live action Beauty and the Beast with some of the characters and the Enchanted Rose and the mirror in one of the rooms. Uh, the light fixture in the main room is designed to look like Belle's dress and they have a myriad of fantastic cocktails and eats. We are going to be enjoying the forest themed room, which my Slytherin heart loves because it's green. And it looks like the uh, forest that Belle has to run through where she encounters the wolves. Uh, but then you've got the main bar room, which again has the chandelier that looks like her dress and then the rose themed room. There's also a patio that's under a refurbishment right now. Taking a look at the Enchanted Rose menu. They do have a few small bar snacks uh, when they first open from 3.30 until 5. And then starting at 5 until 10, they have a variety of appetizers. The food here is really good because they share a kitchen with Citrico's, the signature restaurant. So they've got things like a nice charcuterie board, croquettes, a, a trout dip. They're known for their truffle fries. And then looking at the cocktails. We have a few featured cocktails that are signature to the Enchanted Rose. The Lavender Fog actually has uh, Twining's tea in it. We both enjoy the seasonal old fashioned as well. Then you get into what are called the Grand Cocktails. Some of these are carryovers from Meisner's, but these are just cocktails that the Grand Floridian is known for. So it's the Grand Floridian signature Manhattan and old fashioned and Cosmo and things of that nature. Ah, yes, here's that Cosmo and more of their featured martinis. And then, of course, we are at the Grand. We are at a fancy spot. So they've got a huge spirits, wine, uh, champagne, beer collection as well. So anything you can think of and dream of here, especially if it's a little bougier, they probably have it. So we're going to start you off with our Lavender Fog. This is our most popular cocktail we have on our menu. And also, by my opinion, the most unique drink that we have. It's creamy, frothy, has a little bit of essence of old gray in there. It's a plain little London Fog for you. Uh, so definitely on the floor, so I feel ready to try out. And then over here we have our seasonal old fashioned. This features a Whittle and Jane Tan bourbon, a house made cranberry syrup, and orange bitters in there for you. Uh, this one's going to be a little more sweeter and a little more smoother than a regular old fashioned. Uh, it's our most popular edition of the seasonal old fashioned. It's also going to be here for a limited amount of time as we are in the process of making a new one for you. Uh, but yeah, please enjoy, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Our drinks. Have arrived, and as Miguel mentioned, we have the Lavender Fog. This is Nolet's Silver Dry Gin, Rothman and Winter Cream de Violette, Twining's English Breakfast Tea, Vanilla and Cream. And this is the seasonal old fashioned that is made with the house made orange and cranberry syrup and served with a rosemary sprig. Also, look, it's branded with the Grand Floridian on the ice. Because we're fancy here. So fancy. Fancy. Thank you, out. Oh, you're doing both? <laughs> is that intentional? I don't know that both pinkies need to be out, but it's like double fancy. Yeah, that is a, that is a wildly fancy experience. <laughs> Oof. It is a very delicious old fashioned, and I have had this before, and this is the best version of it I think I've had. 
it is slightly sweeter than a classic old fashioned, so this would be a good starter old fashioned. However, you can still taste that high quality bourbon. I think the orange, uh, the, the house made syrup just kind of cuts that burning feeling on the back end, but it's still very forward when you smell it. I love the fresh sprig of rosemary. A plus, I think one of the best old fashions on property. I've not had this cocktail before, but it looks intriguing. I'm confused because I'm not normally a fan of milk-based cocktails, but this is incredibly refreshing and very light, and I think it's because of the gin and the Earl Grey tea. I have to tell you this, if you don't enjoy a tea flavor or a very herbaceous and floral forward tasting beverage, this isn't going to be for you. If you don't like milk-based drinks, I think give this a chance. Uh, I, if you had asked me prior to this, I would have said, no, not a fan, but I'm going to keep sipping on this. Definitely a unique cocktail. Yeah, this is probably one of the most brave or out there cocktails that I've seen on a Disney menu, uh, which is just known for safer drinks. It's like if Mrs. Potts made a cocktail. Like high tea. Yeah. I dig it. I'm here for tea. Thank you, Mrs. Potts. Our fabulous server, Miguel, brought us over the food. Now, if you've been here before, you're probably not shocked to know the most popular item are the house-made truffle fries. So these are house-cut French fries with black truffle and aged Parmesan, and they're served with a truffle aioli. They are fantastic, so I'm glad that we're getting to eat these. But then something neither of us have tried are the croquettes. They are potatoes stuffed with house-made fennel sausage, a tomato sauce, and topped with some pecor Pecorino Romano cheese. And Miguel said these are one of the most underrated things on the menu. He was actually going to do the flatbread for us, but they have pesto on it. And since Alan has a pine nut allergy, he made sure to take care of us. And uh, no cross-contamination, but also he didn't want to give us the, uh, the flatbread. So therefore, potato croquettes it is. And I got to tell you, I'm not upset. Let's start with the delightful french fries. <laughs> and taking a little bath in the aioli. Please don't miss. Thick cut fry, very clearly fried twice for that type of texture. Nice salt, pepper, slices of truffle. Parmesan cheese and the aioli. You gotta get them. You don't have a choice, really. They're just wonderful. I mean, you do have a choice, obviously, but these are great. While I continue to gush over these fries, the potato is perfectly fluffy on the interior. Nice, strong flavor of truffle. Not overly salty, which is, which can happen with french fries. The Parmesan is a nice addition. These are mm. just amazing. Mm-hmm. Yum. Oh, oh yeah. Oh my. Oh my gosh, look at all that potato. I'm gonna get some of the cheese. Some tomato. Come here, cheese. Don't hide from me. All right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, you should see Alan's face behind the camera. Those are fantastic. I thought that it was gonna be like a potato stuffed with sausage, but basically inside is a mixture of like a mashed potato with some sausage as a part of it. And that whole thing has been fried and it's really light and crispy on the fry, nice crunch on that. There's a little bit of heat. I think it's coming from the tomato sauce as well as the sausage. Not, a, not overwhelming, but just a little bit of spice, lots of pepper and garlic, and then the nuttiness from the cheese on top, basil, little sweetness from that and the tomato. Really rich, I think definitely shareable. We have two forms of potato here, and I don't think I can choose. An evil genius is that word. Now, here we have the influencer cutting up the potato. What is happening right he now? He had a burst of inspiration upon trying it the first time. Now, the influencer is creating some kind of hybrid delicacy, it appears. He's taken some of the fried potato, and he's putting on some of the other fried potato. <laughs> he seems clearly happy and that the experiment was a success. Dr. Frank Frankenstein, it's so good to have you here. What are you talking about? <laughs> I am Molly Attenborough. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. That was, that was a surprise. That was delicious. Okay, what do you think was the best and what was the biggest surprise? Well, I want to say the old-fashioned because... 
Yeah. It's an old fashioned and that's my drink of choice. But I gotta say, those potato croquettes were delightful. I, I'm kind of mad at us for sleeping on that for yeah. as long as they were slept on. Yes. If you come to Enchanted Rose, obviously the truffle fries are delicious. Obviously their drinks are great, but those croquettes were very tasty. And I feel like hearty enough to make a, a couple small plates could make a pretty good meal there. Absolutely. And I just want to acknowledge this one more time. They had a little bit of zip to them, mm -hmm. a little bit of spice, which doesn't happen on a lot of dishes that Disney serves. So that was really nice to see. They were excellent, as was this entire day. Going on a monorail crawl is one of my favorite activities because you get to check out the resorts that maybe you're not staying at. Um, it's a great thing to do in the middle of the day when it's hot or raining, or if it's a check-in day or a day where maybe you're going to the parks later for like an after hours an event. Monorail crawl is always a fun thing to do. And I just want to reiterate one more time how wonderful all the cast were today. We made sure to take some time to give them all a cast compliment at the end of our day today, which is something that if you have an excellent interaction with the cast member, please do as well. It's easy to find in the My Disney Experience app, and it's a great way to acknowledge the effort of cast members who go above and beyond. Thank you again, Miguel, Sarah, Julian, and Patrick Michael. If you enjoyed Cast Member Decides series, let us know. We can try and figure out other ways to do this other places, but trying out something new, wanted to mix up a monorail crawl, and who better to ask than the amazing cast? In the meantime, friends, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you are new, follow us on all of our socials, and if you want to join in the conversation, join us on Discord. The links are all down below. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Alan. And it has been so magical. Bye. Really? Bye. I just smacked my ears. Do you think anyone noticed? No.